Hello everyone. We will continue the topic number range. And in the previous video, we understood the concept of number range. Then we took one requirement. Based upon that requirement, we created the number range object through SNRO transaction code. After that, we assign the intervals to that number range object. Interval means the values. What will be the value? From value and to value. After that, when we created the number range and assign the interval, the number range object stored into TNRO table and number range interval stored into NRIV table. Now we will proceed further. So our number range object is ready. We assigned the interval to number range object. That is also ready. Now we need to go for the program. In that program, what we will do? In that program, input will be name, age, and address. Whenever user will click on to the execute button, new employee ID will generate with this particular data. It means we will go for a table. In that table, four columns will be there. Employee ID, employee name, employee age, and employee address. But employee ID, user will not pass from the screen. Employee ID, we will automatically generate by using this particular function module. That's why this is our topic. So our major focus is, yes, we created the number range object. We assign the interval to the number range object. Then how, how we can use this particular function module to generate the next number. And in the projects, we are always going for this. We will put some data, next number automatically generate. We'll put some data, next number automatically generate. So we are going for same sort of requirement. So firstly, I will create that table with these four columns. Then I will move on to the program. So I will go to SC11 transaction code and we will create that table with these four columns. I will choose the database table. You all know you can create tables through SC11 transaction code. First letter will be Z or Y. Suppose I will say ZTEMP ID. Table for employee. Suppose I will write EMP LOY double E. ZT employee. I will go for create. I will give the short description. Table for employee. Now I will go for delivery class. Delivery class, I will take A. I will not go for C because we are not maintaining the data through SN30. Our program will put the data into this particular table. So I will go for A. A is for master and transaction data. I will go for display maintenance allowed. Anyways, we are not maintaining the data through SM30. I will go for fields. What will be the first column in the table? MA and DP. Data element for MA and DT is MA and DT. And we are always taking MA and DT as the primary key of that table. Suppose first column EID. Employee ID will be the primary key of the table. Now here, you can create your own data element and domains or you can use SAP data element also. It is totally, totally your wish. Suppose I will use SAP once data element itself because our major focus is not this that how to create a table. Our major focus is yes, to understand the number ranges. So what I will do, I will simply, simply use the SAP predefined data elements itself. Suppose employee ID, numeric 10. I am writing numc10. You can create your own data element. You can create your own domains. No problem at all. If you do not have the knowledge of creation of data element and domain, 
you can refer the playlist of a BAP dictionary. In the starting videos itself, you will understand how to create data element and domains. If I will double click on to this data element, suppose I will save this table as a local object. This data element has a domain of numc10. So our employee ID is numeric 10. Suppose I will go for employee name. Suppose employee name is character form. These all are SAP predefined data elements itself. You can see first letter N, C, M. It means it is not starting with Z or Y. It means these are SAP predefined data element. So this is data element which has a domain of character 40. Suppose I will go for now. Okay, employee age. Suppose I will write E H. Suppose age, I will take suppose numc2. So numc2, yes, it is has again a domain of numc2, yes. Now suppose I will go for employee address. Suppose address is character 50, suppose I will take. Okay. So this character 50, yes, it's a SAP predefined data element which has a domain of character 50. Now I will go for technical settings. Now I will go for data class. I will go for suppose AWPL0. Okay, so suppose if I'm considering this as a master data, so I will take as AWPL0. If I'm taking it as a transaction data, it is AWPL1. Anyway, it depends upon what customer is saying. So suppose I will take this as a master data. Employees are the master data. So I will choose AWPL0. Suppose I will take the size category 0. I will go for save. I will go for back button. Now I will activate the table. So my table is ready. This is not a customized table. We are not maintaining the data through SM30. Our program will insert the data into this table. Now I will go for the creation of the program. I will go to SC38 transaction code and I will create a program. Suppose I am saying Z P R G. Suppose underscore employee. I will go for create. Suppose I will write employee creation program. Suppose employee creation program. I will choose the type as executable program and I will save this as a local object. I will simply activate the program. Now input to the program will not be employee ID. Employee ID system will generate based upon the number range. So you have to take other things as the as a part of input. Suppose at a time we will only go for one employee ID. So I will take other things as parameters. Only. Suppose I will go for single input. So I am taking parameters. Suppose first one. I'll just take the reference from the table. Suppose P underscore E name. Employee name. Type suppose employee name is character 40. Now I will go for another parameter. Suppose employee age. E H type employee age is suppose numc2 parameters p underscore employee address type suppose it is character 50 now I will activate and I will provide the selection text Go to text elements. I will go for selection text. 
this is our address. I will not go for DDIC reference. If I will go for DDIC reference, suppose now I choose the SAP data elements. If I will choose that DDIC reference, system will go for CARE. That we do not want to go for CARE. If I, this particular employee name is displaying as CARE, system will confuse. Suppose I will choose DDIC reference. I'm activating. So this system will confuse. So you need to provide. Your user will confuse, I will say. The best word is user will confuse. System is anyways bringing from the field label. This is our address. This is our age. And this is our employee name. Suppose I'll simply write name. I will go for active. I will go to back button and our program or sorry, our input is ready. Suppose I will make all three as obligatory. Obligatory means it is compulsory to pass. You all know whenever you want to make a parameter or select option mandatory, you need to go for obligatory. Now, whatever the input user is passing plus whatever the employee ID will generate, we need to put into this database table. This is our requirement. We need to insert it to this database table. You all know whenever you want to insert the record to database table, you have a test database operation insert. So we'll simply, simply go for that database operation. Now I will simply write firstly, insert, what is our database table? This is our database table. From, now I will simply, simply put the work area. You all know we are only going for single record. We are inserting single record to database table. So I will go for work area. Suppose I'm writing LWA underscore EM. I will declare LWA, LWA underscore EMP data. LWA underscore EMP type. Now I'm directly writing the name of the table. This is the most common mistake which maximum people are doing, but they will do. Okay. Now just see what I did. I declared the work area referring to this particular table. It means this work area is ref this work area is of type this. If I will double click, it means this work area has these five columns, five columns including MA and DT. It is most most important point whenever you are going for database operation, your work area or internal table. Whatever the work area or internal table you are using, it must have the same structure as that of database table. Table has how many columns including M A and DT? Five columns. So I declare the work area referring to the table itself. So this table, five columns, work area, five columns. Many times people, what they will do? They will only declare the work area with four columns. But they will do, they will declare a types here. This is the most common mistake which maximum people do during the database operation. They will declare one structure and they will take four columns into that structure and they will declare the work area referring to that structure. See table has five columns including MA and DT and you are going for four columns. Then in that case, what will happen? One column is not there. So whatever the data is there, it will go to MA and DT column, employee name, employee ID, employee age, employee name, employee address, employee age, and employee ID address. Nothing is there. Yes. So whenever you are going for database operation, always, always the work area or internal table, which you are using, it must have the same structure as that of database table. There's no problem if you are creating a structure by your own, but do not forget to take MA and DT or I'll say simple word, 
do not take all the columns which are in that table. Otherwise, it will be a mismatch. Maximum time people, what they will do? They will go for work area of two or three column. Table has five column and you are going for two or three column. Then it will be a mismatch. How system understand that data of this column should go to this particular column. So always make a practice that whenever you are going for database operation, internal table or work area which we are using must have the same type as that of database table. Now I will simply remove this. Now. Now, whatever you are passing from the screen. Now, people will say this work area is blank. So, the blank record will go to database table. We'll write the logic for the same to move. So, I will write work area hyphen employee name. It is coming from where? P underscore employee name. So, whatever the employee name you are passing from the screen will pass it to work area. Control D, control D. This is employee name. This is employee age. And this is employee address. I will write here employee age. Now I will go for employee address. Now I will check the syntax and activate up to this level. Now, what is the summary of this particular video? Based upon our requirement, I firstly created the table. While creating the table, I use the SAP data elements itself. You can create your own data elements and domain, no problem at all. And it is not a customizing table. It is your, you can consider it as a master or transaction data table. Anyways, it depends upon the requirement. Yes. So you need to take delivery class as A. I took the columns in the table. Employee ID is the primary key. I passed the technical settings. Then I created the program. In that program, input is never, never employee ID. Because this is our base of the topic itself. Employee ID user will not pass. System will generate using the number range. So we took three parameters because we are going for a perception that at a time, only one employee ID will generate. I made them obligatory. Then I use the database operation. I put insert database table from work area. Whatever you are passing from the screen, I put it to the work area. And please make sure that work area or internal table, whichever you are using, must have the same structure as that of database table. Now people will think, we have not written the logic for employee ID. That part is most important because that is our base of the topic. In the next video, I will use this function module. With the help of this function module, whatever the employee ID will generate, I will pass that to also to this particular work area. That part will continue in the next video. So that's it in this video. Thank you.